We've been telling you for years now that governments are coming up with more and more excuses to cancel your passport and keep you grounded. But what if it were your own fellow citizens trying to do the same? Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist, where we helped everyone from billionaires to celebrities to everyday seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors like yourself legally go where you're treated best. Lower taxes, dual citizenship, better opportunities overseas. And I came across an article on a website called Joe in the UK. The UK, one of the countries where the government has been talking, has been spouting off at least, about canceling your passport. Hey, if you don't do this thing that we like, Maybe we'll keep you here in the UK. Maybe we'll make it difficult or impossible for you to get out. The UK, Canada, the US, etc. have been talking about this. And it started uh, back in the mid-2010s when the US passed a law saying, if you have a $50,000 or greater tax debt, we're going to cancel your passport or we're going to refuse to issue you a new one. Now, they're not saying they're going to take away your citizenship. You're still a US citizen, right? Citizenship allows you to apply for a passport. A passport is what you use to, to travel on. So they're not going to make you stateless. But they are going to say you can't get a passport. Now, of course, as the goody two shoes of the offshore industry, I say if you're living in the United States, you should pay what you owe. And if you want to go where you're treated best, then you should leave the United States. But we all know that tax offices make mistakes. They are notoriously inefficient in some cases. And so certainly there is room for error in there. I've said that for years. So now one of the countries we've been talking about where the trend is towards talking about certain people with criminal records and you know, shouldn't have their passports renewed or shouldn't have passports issued is the UK. And again, sounds easy, right? Don't be a criminal. But yet we've heard from Canada, from Justin Trudeau, hey, you know, if you go up there and protest, you might be made a criminal and then you can't travel. So these things have a way of coming around. I've never really felt comfortable talking about this because for just a, an entrepreneur like myself, it seems a little doom and gloomy, yet I keep seeing it coming up. And so I think it's worth talking about that Western countries want to take your passport. They're open to doing that on the right conditions if you go against them in some way. But here's the article from Joe that should make you a little bit more uncomfortable. And that says, government should remove citizenship for dual nationals, half of Brits say. Let me tell you what this says. There's a, uh, a poll that came out as the prime minister is trying to push through the borders bill, which would criminalize refugees, but it's not about refugees. People with dual nationality should be stripped of their British nationality if they commit a serious crime, half of Brits say. Now, okay, hey, don't commit a serious crime. It seems pretty simple. What are the serious crimes? I'd like to know that. A YouGov poll for Politics Joe revealed that 57% of people think that government should be able to remove citizenship for dual nationals, with a quarter believing they should be allowed to make British citizens stateless if they commit serious offenses. These people maybe need to go through and, and take a civics class. Under existing law, citizenship can be removed from people considered to pose a threat to the UK, including terrorism or war crimes, or if they obtain their citizenship fraudulently. That's true. You may remember in the United States, the Trump administration was purported to be going through and, and looking at you know, naturalization fraud, something where somebody comes in, they lied on their naturalization paperwork, and therefore their naturalization was a fraud. Hey, we're going to cancel your citizenship. It happens all the time in different administrations, in not just the US, but around the world. Uh, and so if something comes across their desk, it's also happened with, uh, you know, in the Obama administration when, when people were uh, found that, you know, they were war criminals and they had said, no, I don't have any connection to that kind of stuff. And then they were eventually kicked out often at very old ages from, from the Second World War. So that's nothing new. The idea that if you obtain citizenship by naturalization fraudulently, you can have it taken away. Same thing in our business. If you obtain citizenship by investment and you don't disclose something when you're applying for that, they can cancel the deal letter. You broke the terms of the contract and they get to keep your money too. So I always say, be fully forthcoming when needed. Uh, but obviously terrorism and war crimes, not good things. And I want to go on the record as being against that. But I also want to go on the record as saying that these things tend to have a bit of a scope creep to them, where people in the citizenry are willing to say, hey, you know what, who cares if that guy has any citizenship at all? That might be their only citizenship. You might be a British born person and who knows what could happen? Who knows to what it extends at one point? If the method is, hey, if you do something that we don't like, we're okay with you being stateless, okay? It's one thing to say, hey, you're, you, know, you were born in Afghanistan, you came to the UK, you committed some crimes, you lied on your naturalization forms, hey, we don't want you. 
you can make an argument for that, but can you make an argument for someone who's perhaps born in the UK and then goes against the grain? Because there's one thing I know about society is you will find, whether it's 27 or, or 25 or 57% of people, you'll find a decent percentage of people anywhere. I would argue, especially in the West, in the virtue signaling Western world, you're gonna find a lot more of them. But you will find a percentage of folks anywhere who say, you know what, you should have known better, right? And usually these people are criticizing things just in your day-to-day -day life where you're correct. Let me give you a day-to-day -day example of how this happens. I am, much to my chagrin, a lifetime member of the Marriott Bonvoy Elite Program. I've spent well over a thousand nights at five-star hotels, including a lot of the different Marriott properties. Now, you go to these hotels and you consistently have a lot of problems. You order a tea kettle, you've got to call five times over the course of two hours, and by the fifth time you call, you're like, guys, like, let's, can we get a move on this? You, know, you start to get a little antsy. And that's just the thing that people in any kind of bureaucracy or any kind of you know, virtue signaling environment or any kind of micro power holding environment love, because then they can jump on, why are you, there's no need to yell. There's no need to use that language. There's no, no, there's, sir, there's no need to talk like that. We don't want to tolerate that. Are, are we not human beings also? Are we not also human? Yeah, no one said you're not human. I just said, why don't you guys uh, get off your culos and uh, bring up the tea kettle the first time I called in this $800 a night joint. But that doesn't make, that, that, that's not the argument. And I think if you extrapolate that, because the argument is you raised your voice a little bit. The argument is you went a little bit against society. Obviously terrorism and the Ritz-Carlton not bringing a tea kettle, yeah, there's a little bit of gap. But I think that on a societal level, people are conditioned the same way as those hotel workers. What's like, well, listen, we understand that you posted something on Facebook that was critical of Boris Johnson. But, you know, listen, it's a time of war and we're not supposed to be doing that, so you got to go. I mean, like, that's the kind of way that people think is they rationalize this. They jump on it and they jump on bandwagons and they'll be more than happy to to get along with everybody else say hey you know what everyone else is for canceling citizenship so let's just do that and so i do think that's a concern now forget leaving people stateless let's just walk that back okay let's walk that back to an earlier level of just saying you know what we don't want to issue you a passport we don't want you going out there and representing British people or Canadian or you fill in the blank. We don't want you out there. You can stay right here and think about what you've done. Do you really think you're not going to find a percentage of the average person out there in any Western society that couldn't get behind that? They're telling you in one out of four cases, we don't mind leaving a stateless if you do something we disagree with. And I promise you, change it from, from war crimes obviously, you know, I'm not supporting that, but you change it from that to something else that's offensive but more offensive than actually harmful. And you will find some number of people to say the same thing. And those numbers, you know, this is what I've been telling you, is when I started looking at the trends of where the Western world is going economically and culturally back in the mid-1990s, I saw it was heading down. This was the thing we discussed around the dinner table. And it's been proven right to where that number is going to be going up of people who say, you should be cut off. And so uh, under existing law, they can be canceled. Uh, but it would be a breach of human rights legislation to send individuals back to a country where their life would be in serious danger. Again, maybe you're born in the UK, maybe you're born in Canada, they want to shut you down, they want to stop you from traveling, who knows what they want to do. Um, now, could they make you stateless? Again, there's certain things that no matter what the people want, they're just not going to do. But it's worth considering, again, if you say, oh, okay, they could make you stateless, could they pull it back to, we're just not going to give you a passport, you're stuck here, you're stuck. So the article goes on and on and on, and uh, it talks about situations that don't really apply to the average nomad capitalist, people getting sent back to war zones. That's not what we're talking about. It does say that new plans drawn up by the Home Secretary in the Nationality and Borders Bill could give government the power to strip people of their British citizenship without warning, a move that has been described as uncivilized and legally disputable. This has been an ongoing conversation in the UK for a number of years about stripping people of their citizenship. By the way, uh, I was in the radio business many, many, many years ago in the United States, uh, and a radio host named Michael Savage had been put on the list where he was not able to enter the UK for fomenting hate. And he was on a list with terrorists and other people. And I think a lot of people in the UK defended the Home Secretary's decision to add his name to that list. He was banned from Britain, as he said. Now, you may disagree with the guy. Uh, you may say that his speech is over the top. To ban a talk show host seems a little bit intense, but you know, most people would agree with that. Oh, if he doesn't like what we talk about, then by, just keep him right out, keep him right out, you can go, keep him out. 
And that is the issue. You know, I don't want to make too far of a leap to statelessness, but I do see a trend that, again, culturally speaking, is there anyone going to be left to defend you? Are the people, as they say, you know, strong times, good times, create weak people? We have a lot of weak people in the West right now. Are they going to stand up for any kind of human rights? Are they going to stand up for you? Are they going to stand up for your citizenship, your freedom to travel, if you do something that upsets them in the new world of the social credit score? This is not the world that I would like to live in, quite frankly. This is not the stuff I'd like to be talking about. But it comes across my desk, and I think it's worth sharing, uh, because I think having dual citizenship is important. Now, certainly, you know, if you do something really nasty and you're a dual citizen, then hey, you're making it easier for them to cancel your citizenship. I hope that no one's watching this video is out committing war crimes or out doing any of that stuff. And so then it becomes a question of, well, how are you protecting yourself from a government where these consistent conversations come back to, if we don't like you, we're going to freeze your bank accounts, we're going to cancel your passport. Justin Trudeau threatened not war criminals and terrorists, he threatened people protesting. Were some of them a bit out of control? I'm sure they were. Didn't follow the whole thing. I'm sure some of them were out of control. And I'm sure the vast majority of them were not. So he's going to threaten to take away your ability to travel. This is a trend and you should be prepared. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalists personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply. Learn about our unique tried and true process. Garnered over years of experience and learn how you can become our client.